At the end of this tutorial, I will show you how to make comic book flames. So it looks 2D, but it's actually 3D, and I will show it to you in a second. It's 100% 3D. And on top of that, I'll also show you how to animate it. So for example, over here, we have this comic book flame animated. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, before we begin, the first thing we want to do is create our fire motion model. So let's select this default cube, press X, delete, shift A, mesh, and we're going to use a UV sphere. Press numpad 1 to be in front orthographic view, press tab and go into edit mode. Go to the top here, select this top vert, numpad 1 again to be in front orthographic view. Turn on proportional editing and change this to sharp. Then press G. Lift this up, press Z to lock to the Z axis, and you can decide what you think is appropriate. Hold in shift for more accuracy and I'm making a touch the circle. Something like that should be perfect. Press tab, go into object mode, right click shade smooth, and we've got this teardrop. Next thing we want to do is use our modify properties, add a modifier, and the modifier we're going to use is a displacement modifier. Go to your texture properties and we're going to add a new texture and the texture we're going to use is a marble texture and does that not look like fire no it doesn't because we have to go to our modify properties and reduce the strength uh, i'm leaving mine on 0.2 that looks pretty good to me but i have to change the coordinates from local to object and i'm going to rename this sphere i'm going to call it fire and i'm going to add a new object for the coordinates and it's going to be an empty and I'm going to rename this empty fire motion empty because that's what it does. So now I select my fire and in the displacement on fire, I use the fire motion coordinates as the object. And what this does is when we select our fire, um, fire motion coordinates, we press G and we grab this, it moves the fire. It's moving a little bit too fast for my liking. Let's press N. And what we could do, hover over your location while with your fire motion empty selected, delete this, use a hashtag and type in frame. By doing that, press enter again, press G, said, if it's not working, we can just type in hashtag frame divided by 10. And for whatever reason, fixes itself and also dividing it by 10 slows it by 10 which is quite useful so now when we press G Z we lift it up gives an interesting fire motion effect which is pretty dope all right so we pretty much done yeah all we need to do now is um, choose our keyframes so currently zero zero it's everything is on zero but let's choose our fire motion coordinates and press hover over the Z axis and press I Press I, location, go to the end frame, change this to 25, and press I, location. And what that does now is we've just created our fire motion. We are 100% complete with this for 250 frames. That's roughly 10, 11 seconds. Quite happy with that. The next thing we want to do is make it pretty. So now this is where the real fun begins. We're going to go to our shader editor, select our fire, create a new texture, and select this and delete it. Then press Shift A, and we're going to use an emission shader. Connect this to the surface. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Hold on. There we go. Connect this to the surface. Change to your render view. Let's go to our render settings just to set it up. I like to have bloom turned on. I'm going to give this emission a strength of 5. And volumetrics, I'm going to turn on volumetric shadows. And I'm going to just reduce this to 4 so it looks as good as it possibly can. And you could turn on other stuff, but it's not really needed. I'll just turn these things on, and I'm quite happy with that. Next thing you want to do is press Shift-A. And we're going to go to our textures and we're going to use a gradient texture. And we're going to connect this over here. We're going to click on this and press Control T because we have Node Wrangler installed. If you don't have Node Wrangler installed, if you're wondering what that is, go to Preferences, 
add-ons, search here and type in node. And you'll see node wrangler, just make sure it's ticked. All right, that saves so much time. Now we can just switch straight into object mode, which is great. Now we see half and half, and that's not exactly the look we're going for. So let's just change the x-axis to minus 90. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try y-axis minus 90. There we go, that's what we want. And let's play with some of these strengths. So perhaps make this 1110.2. And let's make this x-axis 1. And we could bring it down, hold in shift. And we just want the tip of this to have black on, which would be perfect. Next thing we can do between the gradient texture and the emission is press Shift A. And we're gonna click on Converter and we're gonna select Color Ramp and we're gonna drop it in like that. And this is where we add the beautiful colors. So you can press plus plus twice and put this at 0 0.8 and put this one at 0 0.05 or perhaps 0 0.1 should be fine. And select the black click on this and change the alphas to zero. Select this one here, bring it all the way up and make it a reddish orange. Select this one over here, bring it all the way up and make it a fiery orange. And then select this white over here and make it a yellow, I guess. And there you go, you've got this beautiful texture which I'm quite happy with. And the next step is press Shift A, shaders, and let's add a mix shader so we can make sure that the black would be considered potentially transparent. Let's press Shift A, shaders, transparent, and we can connect it in here. So now when the factor is zero, it's 100% emission. When the factor is one, it's 100% transparent. And uh, obviously Eevee struggles with this, but uh, if we change to cycles, for example, it would be far more visible. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to Eevee because it's a much better workflow. Leave this on 0 0.5. In fact, we're gonna connect something to this to make it work the way we want, to, want it to work. Press Shift A, and we are looking for, in the search bar, type in layer weight. And choose facing and connect it in here. And by doing that, all you need to do now is just increase this strength. If it's one, it's pretty much invisible. So you have to hold in, move this, hold in Shift, and bring it down to whatever le level you think is appropriate. I'm going to make this 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.99, 0 0.98. Yeah, I like 0 0.98. It's just my personal preference. Choose whichever preference you want. All right, we're almost done. All we need to do now is um, duplicate our mix shader, Shift D, chuck it over here. Duplicate our layer weight, Shift D, chuck it over here, and duplicate our transparent shader, Shift D. Now with all of these selected, let's just clean this up so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go, I'm quite happy with that. Let's add this mix shader over here. Let's add this transparent over here. And let's use a magic texture. So you can press Shift A, Textures, and look for magic texture. And we're gonna connect our object into the vector over here. And we can press Shift A. We can also use a converter known as a color ramp. And we can connect the fact in here. And then we can press Shift A and use a converter math 
I'm not getting enough space yet. Let's just move some of this stuff back. There we go, convert to math, change this to less than, and connect this into the top value, and connect this facing into the bottom value, and connect this value into the factor, and there's a few things we can change here. Let's change this layer weight to 0 0.7 roughly, and change the scale to 1.25. And obviously you can decide on what scale you want. If you don't like 1.25 and you want a slightly different look, go for it. Choose what you like. I'm gonna use 1.25, because I'm quite happy with that. Currently when we press spacebar here, we can just see how it looks. It's interesting, I quite like it. And there's a few more things we want to do here. If we perhaps change the emission strength, let's see what 30 looks like. It's harder to tell the, the difference. So choose a, choose a level of intensity that works for you. Let's try 10, let's try five. I'm gonna leave it on five for now. No, I can't help it. Let's leave it, let's take it to the max, put it on 30. And the next thing I'm gonna press Shift A. Mesh, plane, G, Z, minus one, S, 15. So we can see this here. If we look at it through our camera view, let's create one window for our camera. And change to render view. All right, so now we can select this plane, give it a new material, call this floor, so we know it's the floor material. Select this, delete it, press Shift A, and let's use a shader, not any shader, but a glossy shader, one of my favorite shaders, and connect it to the surface. And let's make the roughness 0 0.2. And perhaps let's choose a color that's a little bit more interesting. In fact, I'm going to make this white. F, 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 enter. I'm just going to then make it black. Just off black like that. And then I'm going to go to my world properties and click on color dot over here and change it to environmental textures. Go to HDR Haven for a free HDR image or just use any image you like. And I've downloaded a random one. Downloads. There we go. There we go, I'm quite happy with that. Press spacebar to play that. Get to see how the fire looks. There's still a few things we probably want to change here. Perhaps we should make this white. Or blue or something, I don't know. It just looks a little bit better. Black doesn't work so well. Not enough of a contrast. Okay, cool. And this is the end result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.